I'm addicted to cold plunges after listening to the Huberman podcast about it. Have you two done cold plunges? Got any cool riffs on temperature regulation? <clears throat> so we have a lot to say about temperature regulation. I don't know if, if you have done cold plunges per se. There's a, there's a Korean women's spa uh, in the Pacific Northwest that I have gone to that has a bunch of hot pools, also infrared saunas and steam sauna and dry sauna. And in the room that has all the hot pools of various temperatures, it also has a cold pool. And um, so I've, I've done it there a few times. It's been a long time since I've been there, but um, it's kind of extraordinary. And it, 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 uh, it's ridiculously underselling it to say it wakes you right up, but uh, it, it clearly resets some stuff. And there, you know, there's going to, I have not seen the Superman or watched, listen to the Superman podcast, but I'd be interested. Uh, yeah, there's, there's something there around heat shock proteins and there's something there around just kind of a reboot at a lot of levels around what to expect from your world. But there's also, uh, sort of giving your body things that are outside of normal bounds so that it knows to be on alert that actually you're going to have to deal with things like this on occasion. Yep. I think that's good. I have done some, uh, mostly Alpine lakes. Mm. Oh a, God, you have, yeah, you've tried, you've tried yeah. to get me to, well, that's, in that case, you're like, yes, but you're coming out into air that's not that warm still. So I don't, I'm not going to do it there. Uh, yeah, but it's, you, you love it. It's yeah. so good. I mean, yeah. you know, love it is a weird thing to say. You have been enthusiastic about it. I am enthusiastic about yes. it. I think it's very, very good for you. And I don't exactly know why, but yeah. boy, do you feel alive after you've, <laughs> uh, do? Divin. Divin. Yeah. After you've driven into uh, an find. alpine uh, lake, even in midsummer, you know, at altitude, these things are very. You're not very cool. actually recommending diving into a body of water that you haven't already sussed out, are you? No. Okay. I would. Yes, I wouldn't you want you to want do to that. Know how deep it is. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think it's uh, you know I do sort of have the sense. Okay, with heat, heat shock proteins. With cold, I sort of a there's this very interesting phenomenon we've all experienced it where uh you jump into some water it's very cold and then 30 seconds a minute later you feel like oh well, that's pretty good i can stay in right even though for that 30 seconds at the beginning it was like ah it's terrible right so i think what that is is we are total wusses over the loss of heat to the environment because our ancestors didn't have enough to eat and losing heat is expensive right it's just like mm -hmm. burning money right um and so the point is you jump into the water and it takes your capillaries some time to shut down, to basically shunt the blood inward where it's not losing so much heat to the environment. Once it's done that, the cost of you staying in is lower, but the discomfort is a measure of your instantaneous costs. Mm -hmm. And as you first jump in, those costs are really, really high. And so anyway, as your capillaries shut down, I sort of have the sense that it's like wringing out a sponge and that actually maybe that's good for you that actually just, you know, shunting all the blood out of your periphery for 10 minutes and then allowing it to reperfuse mm. might have some uh, value mm. just in terms of flushing the yeah. system in some way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. One last question. I've heard some people cite evolution as a reason for not showering daily, i.e. it removes body oils. Is that valid or just plain gross or both? Uh, I got a couple things to say here. Go for it. Um, yeah. I mean, A, I think there is something marvelous about um, daily showers, right? That we, there is something very nice about the Feels ability great. to be cleaner than we would be, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, soap is necessary for certain stuff probably we way overuse it. Absolutely. And we that we disrupt the ecology on our skin surface yeah. um, to a point that's not healthy. I, I will also and, say- I mean, hot water, which I love a hot shower, but um, lukewarm to cool water without any soap isn't going to wash away the oils. Right, right, right. And you know, you use soap where you've accumulated bacteria that smell. Right. Uh, and- by and large, like how often does like right. your upper arm get to a plate? Like actually you don't probably don't need soap there ever. Yep. And that's, you know, that's the vast majority of your skin that's going to be true for, and that's going to be where oils should be accumulating. And no, that's not gross that they accumulate. No, it's not going to smell if, you know, you get, you know, if you have, you know, your natural skin oils accumulating on like the back of your hand or your 
you know, upper arm and back of your, you know, your lower back or something. Um, yeah, lower back, maybe, maybe a intermediate stage, but, um, there's a lot of places where you just don't want, you don't really need this out. Yeah. Almost ever. I mean, yeah. there'll be exceptions, but, um, I would also say there's a game theory problem here. Let's, let's deal with armpits. I think we're downright dumb to be, um, tinkering with the, uh, the smell that comes from your armpits. This is some ancient animal communication mechanism. We don't know what it communicates. We don't know what role it plays. But the fact is you can't, you can't stand down as an individual. Certain mm -hmm. cultures use far less deodorant than others. And the point is everybody is used to everybody else and it's not abnormal. But if you're the one person in a culture who isn't putting on deodorant, it gets noticed. And uh, so anyway... I do think we we are we have messed. We, there's a lot of Chesterton's fence mm -hmm. with stuff like uh, your underarms, right? And we mess with it because it sort of seems like, oh, that's off putting. Uh, <laughs> let's do something about it. Um, but yep. uh, yeah, anyway. Yep, Chesterton's underarms. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> Chesterton's underarm hair. Hair now. Well, the hair yeah. Yeah. clearly distributes the yep. smell, mm -hmm. um, you know, by increasing the surface area. No, absolutely. And I, okay, okay. Well, we'll end with this brief vignette, um, which is that when we were first traveling in Central America, uh, I thought, okay, while well, we're traveling, um, I'm not, I'm not going to shave in the ways that I've shaved before, and um, why should I? And I found that it was so much harder to to keep myself smelling at a level that I wanted to You weren't smell. driving yourself crazy? Yeah, that I wasn't driving myself crazy because yeah. we're in the tropics. We're like, and it's like, I'm no, this is not an affectation. I'm not doing this for fashion. I'm shaving my underarms because it's far easier to stay cleaning, to stay smelling clean to myself without having to use a whole bunch of soaps and, and lotions all the time. Not lotions, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, that 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 was not something I saw coming. Of course, we're talking about when I was twenty, but you know, I spent you know a half a summer going like, maybe I just won't do this. Like, no, actually, I'm happier this way. Yeah. Yep. But makes uh, sense. But then Chesterton's underarm hair. Yes, again. exactly that. Yes, I, I have made the argument. I don't know that I'd believe it, but it's it's a worthy <laughs> argument. Um, you know, would it alter the divorce rate if people allowed their uh, underarm smell to um, be left visible. Is there some? Is there a compatibility metric? I mean, you know, there's certainly work that suggests that things that we can't inherently detect, we detect subliminally, and you know, do say things about the chemistry of a match. Well, I will say this: if we were fighting, and it seemed that uh, maybe we should split up. And I proposed to you that maybe we need to get a divorce. And your response to me was, how about you let your underarm <laughs> hair grow and let's see how you feel about it then. That, pro that, wouldn't, that wouldn't be a selling point. No, that that, wouldn't be that's a point not your... what I'm saying. I'm saying people get together who mm -hmm. their aversion to each other's smell might have prevented an unfortunate... Ah, uh, so before, you know, as part of the sort of like, let's assess, let's talk to your priest or your rabbi or whatever, let's also, you're both going to have to grow, if, if you are both shaved your underarms, you both got to grow this out and just see if you can stand each other's smell for a month. And Kids, then there are certain tricks to figuring out whether you're going to end up in a messy divorce. One is see if you can share a tandem bicycle with somebody. Okay. Two, share a tandem kayak. Three, share a tent. Um... Uh, and for, I don't know, try uh, not using deodorant for a week and see if you hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> this list to be continued later, I expect. <laughs> I mean, that's a pretty, let's put it this way. Any couple that gets through those four things and they're, they're still into each other, it's probably worth a shot. Tandem bicycle, tandem kayak, tandem tent, <laughs> and, uh, and don't shave your underarms and live in close proximity for at least a week. Yeah. Right. And and no and no deodorant. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, and uh, do a podcast together. See how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>